Okay, so in this demonstration, we're going to look at a homegrown version of Kafka Delta Ingest uh, that I have just created um, as of uh, April 24, 2022. And the reason I created this um, using Java is because the official KDI uh, today uh, is, first of all, doesn't support Azure Data Lake Storage. And secondly, it's uh, written on Rust, so the stack is a little bit shaky. So basically, we're going to be looking at this demonstration where this KDI Java uh, in a container is going to be taking CDC logs from SQL on Linux uh, via Debezium uh, into a local Kafka container. And we're going to do some visualizations on top of uh, CalfDrop. And what we're going to see is uh, basically this KDI Java is going to be writing data directly into Delta tables. Uh, without the need of Apache Spark. And that's kind of the whole value add of, uh, of this uh, Delta standalone writer. Uh, from there, we're going to be doing some transformations, um, in this case, using Databricks, um, basically blowing out the JSON that Divisium provides and forming some silver tables. And then, you know, in the future, if required, we can easily do some SCD type one, type two to serve up this data within some analytics layer. So first thing I'm going to do is spin up all the containers here. So basically my full stack, and you know this could easily be in Kubernetes because um, everything here is containerized. So we're gonna look at creating the uh, container spinning up SQL Server. So we can see these are the containers here. And I'm going to insert some data into my SQL Server. So basically running this script to go ahead and create the tables and turn on CDC. So, going ahead and running that. So this basically goes into the SQL instance and it creates the database as well as doing some inserts. And what we're gonna find when our um, KDI container spins up and we run the job, basically it's going to get the initial reads from Debezium because Debezium basically creates a snapshot. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, I'm going to run a curl command. So Divisium basically has a REST API that's part of Kafka Connect. And so here I'm basically saying, go ahead and turn on the SQL Server connector for Divisium. And that basically turned on Divisium. And what I'm gonna do now is basically look at CalfDrop, which is this kind of uh, UI uh, pod that's, uh, that's running over here. And basically it just gives us a nice way to visualize all of our Kafka topics. So as we can see here, these are the basically new topics that got generated on our on our broker here, uh, thanks to Debezium. And the table that we wanna work with is basically this customer's tables. Uh, we're not gonna use these, but basically there's still CDC logs that are being generated here. So if you go in, um, basically, if I go back to my original uh, SQL script here, uh, we see that there was this uh, customer table uh, over here, and there is four uh, records that was inserted in. And so if I go into CalfDrop, uh, what we'll see here is there's basically four records, right? So that basically this uh, this corresponds to the four records that my initial script generated. And then this is the CDC logs that's generated by uh, Divisium here, right? So that's sitting in Kafka. And now what I'm going to do is turn on my KDI Java container. And we're going to look at exactly how it reads from Kafka and does inserts right to Delta tables. So to do that, let me show you here. I've got a... Uh, Azure Storage Explorer that's pointed to my container, uh, my storage container. And this is just my jar file that's basically going to go ahead and run this uh, KDI Java. It's uh, basically an infinite loop that goes ahead and writes directly to Delta using uh, a few Java libraries. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit my jar. And what we're gonna find is the container st uh, starts up and it does an insert of the four rows for this, uh, for this table into the ADLS. And then it basically does a buffer um, until it gets the suitable amount of records. So yeah, very quickly, uh, it went ahead and spun up. Uh, I'm feeding in the broker Kafka topic as well as the uh, buffer duration using environment variables. So if you were using Kubernetes, we could basically just uh, use this as a, as a secret. Um, we see that the container got four records and I'm gonna do some inserts right after to show you how uh, um, it, it basically reacts to events that are coming in through Kafka. Um, and then it basically, I'm just printing out the uh, JSON format for the Kafka key value pair, and it went ahead and did an insert. And then here, after it's done doing the insert, it doesn't insert locally. So actually I'm writing to uh, the local uh, um, container 
here so you can see I've just written the delta log here locally as well as the parquet file that corresponds to the transaction. And then if I do a refresh on an Azure in data lake storage, we can see that the container basically went ahead and wrote uh, the file uh, using the uh, semantics provided into this uh, folder. So we see the parquet file and the delta logs. So uh, basically that corresponds to this bit here, which went ahead and uh, wrote four rows into our uh, data lake storage as well as our uh, local. So at this point, uh, we have our CDC logs uh, basically from Debezium, um, from Kafka, into our data lake storage. And so what we can do is we can go to Databricks, and I've just got this notebook here that's basically going to register this uh, delta table. So basically the key point is I have the ability to go ahead and ingest uh, delta um, files into data lake storage without needing Spark, right? So we don't need this Spark component. We don't need Spark to directly talk to Kafka. We've got this kind of edge container, in this case, it's running on my laptop, uh, that is near to our on-premises Kafka cluster. And we are basically going ahead and uh, um, writing the uh, logs directly into uh, Delta Lake. So that's kind of the value add there. And then from this point, uh, I'm basically uh, going ahead and um, registering the delta tables. And we can see here uh, from Kafka, we've got the raw key value pair that basically corresponds to this data that was written through our uh, KDI uh, right into Delta. And then what I'm doing here is with Databricks, I'm basically just doing a read of our bronze uh, bronze layer, right? So the data is basically in this kind of untransformed um, format. And we can see all the timestamp offset and partitions. From there, uh, I've got this other notebook that basically goes ahead and does some uh, transformations. So basically, I am reading the same raw table. Uh, then we're just taking a look at the same data that we looked at earlier. Then I'm doing some schema inference uh, based on the uh, payload. Um, and then I am going ahead and doing some explosions of the JSON data. So it, really, the, the, the data set that we uh, care about is this uh, value column, because that's what contains the Divisium payload that comes in. And uh, so that basically contains uh, two sections here, payload and schema. That's kind of the Divisium semantics. So if I go ahead and show you the uh, messages, basically this, uh, this is what we are referring to within the payload. And the, uh, uh, this is what is the, uh, the schema from Divisium. And then further, what I'm doing is basically going ahead and doing some quick Spark transformations. So we can see kind of uh, the, uh, the type of semantics that was done on our, on our data. So first we can see is uh, since Divisium spun up and saw those logs directly from SQL Server CDC logs, uh, these are of CRUD type R, so read, and we're gonna do some creates and, and updates and uh, deletes right after. We can see the uh, SQL Server instance name, we can see the database name, uh, we can see the schema, and then on the right, uh, as we scroll over, what we can basically see is uh, the data set that was before. So in this case, the, uh, the columns are uh, created after the fact. So basically, um, the, uh, the, this corresponds to what is after in Divisium. So basically, there was nothing there, and then we went ahead and created the columns. So this is what corresponds to after, and then this is before. And uh, we can see that we've got four rows of data here, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and do some inserts of uh, about 10 rows of data into my uh, SQL Server. And then we're gonna look at exactly how, uh, um, how this uh, corresponds inside this KDI uh, Java container. So we can basically see is this is running in an infinite loop. And at the moment when I'm gonna go ahead and do a uh, insert, um, we're going to see there's going to be new logs in our, uh, in our container. So let me go ahead and basically run this right now. So doing 10 inserts into our, uh, into our database. So if I go ahead and do a select, we will see the, the new data points that I just select, uh, inserted are all here. And then immediately what we see is our, uh, is our container um, running over here is able to get these new um, payloads, the, these new CDC logs, thanks to Divisium. And then it is basically writing all 10 rows into a data lake store. Right, so if I uh, go back to our uh, our uh, calf drop here, uh, what we will see here is uh, we have about 14, so four plus 10, and that, that's what corresponds to all the CDC logs. Um, and I went ahead and did the insert, and then if I go to my Delta Lake and I do a refresh, we see uh, two new Parquet files that corresponds to the data that just got inserted. And then the Delta transaction logs was immediately written using this, uh, uh, this KDI uh, uh, Java uh, container. 
And uh, from there, uh, one of the things we can see uh, through calf drop that's really cool is uh, this uh, this consumer. So basically, uh, the combined lag of our consumer, because it's par part of this uh, Kafka consumer group, we can see there's a lag of zero. So what that means is it has read all of the uh, up to the latest offset of Kafka uh, in this container. So in in, in a, few, a few minutes, I'm just going to do about a thousand inserts. And then what you're going to see is that that corresponds to kind of a little bit of lag um, as the container kind of catches up. So we'll look at that very quickly. But just as this insert was done, if I go ahead and refresh my, uh, my Spark uh, transformation, uh, what I see is that those 10 creates that we just did um, are showing up within our, uh, within our kind of uh, silver layer here, right? So we can basically see, you know, again, um, this, uh, this before and after uh, is still there. So the before, you know, there was nothing here. And then we went ahead and did the inserts, the 10 inserts, and so that's what's corresponding to this after uh, column here, right? So we've got this kind of uh, full view of what our data looks like. And then uh, the 14 rows are, are here as well. So very quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and do some updates and delete just to show you what that looks like. So if I go ahead and do a couple updates on some existing uh, rows of data, uh, we can see that uh, those rows got inserted. So I basically just changed the name of, uh, of a couple people. And we can see here our, our container, um, as soon as Debezium basically picks up the event, um, it immediately goes ahead and uh, does the insert into Delta. And then if I go ahead and run a refresh of our uh, query, what we can see here is the uh, the update um, is uh, is there within the Databricks, right? So these are basically the two updates that we just did. And we can see here, right, these are, this is kind of Debezium semantics. So it, it captures the before, which is what the name used to be before I did the update. And then here, uh, you know, I've added in Kind of a S here, so you can see this is uh, corresponding to the afters, right? So this is basically just Divisium and uh, the semantics it provides us. And we can see we've got two more rows here. Uh, finally, I'm going to do some deletes and, and just to kind of show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a delete here. Um, and then as soon as uh, Divisium basically queries um, uh, queries uh, data um, SQL Server, we're able to get those logs back here as well. So this is basically corresponding to the delete semantics. And uh, now that the write has been done to Data Lake, uh, we can immediately see uh, those uh, uh, those data points within uh, within our data bricks here as well, right? So we can see those two deletes. So again, uh, before it used to have data points, and uh, after there is no data points. That's what's corresponding to this kind of before and after. And we've got the uh, data sets here as well. Um, and then one of the things I want to show before I'm going to do kind of a quick benchmark of a, of, of a large number of rows is. Uh, you know, if we go ahead and, uh, you know, just let's say we kill this container. So this container is uh, kind of got, gone ahead and crashed. Um, if I go ahead and just start the job where it left off, because it's communicating with Kafka for its offsets, you know, I'm just basically starting off the, uh, the uh, container here. I'm going to go ahead and do some new inserts for the deletes that we just did. And we're going to see that, you know, the container is basically smart enough uh, to talk to Kafka and only pick up the new... Um, new events that are coming in. So I'm gonna basically go ahead and do the new events. And uh, as soon as Debezium picks these up, you'll see that the container only picks up from the last offset that it left off at. And then it's basically going ahead and doing the inserts. And so I'm, if I go in here and uh, refresh my uh, Databricks um, uh, Spark transformation, we can see there's basically two uh, creates that are uh, done at this point. And that corresponds to uh, the creates that we just did, right? So that's basically uh, one of these uh, entries uh, over here. And then finally, just to kind of show the transformation. So, you know, this is, uh, it only took me kind of a, like a couple days to kind of create this uh, job. Uh, right now, you know, I haven't gone ahead and performance tuned it. So, uh, you know, right now I, I saw there's about a 404 uh, rows per batch. So if I go ahead and, uh, you know, do uh, inserts, uh, you know, about, um, about a thousand of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this stored proc that is going to go ahead and insert 1,000 rows into my database. So as I'm doing that, uh, we're gonna see basically those 1,000 rows are getting inserted um, or have been inserted into my SQL Server. And uh, what the container is basically doing is, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take a look here at uh, calf drop, is uh, there's gonna be a bit of a lag. So right now it's written one of the rows and it's got 999 more to catch up on. And we can see basically it's picking up kind of 18 rows from Kafka. And so it's gonna go ahead and pick those off um, ideally, what you'd want to do is uh, go, you know, have a horizontal scaling for these pods. So, you know, you would have multiple of these pods that are basically talking to Kafka uh, that are part of different uh, consumer groups. And then each of these can basically go ahead and do its writes into uh, Delta Lake. And because Delta Lake ha uh, supports asset transactions, 
um, regardless of how many pods we have running here, uh, we should be able to basically go ahead and uh, kind of scale out horizontally using something like Kubernetes and uh, kind of uh, take out the backlog. So, you know, what you can see here is, uh, you know, uh, it just went ahead and did an insert of about 400 rows. And so we can see that number is slowly weaning into about, um, about zero. So yeah, at this point we have, uh, the container has gone ahead and, you know, within a few seconds, written the backlog of a thousand rows into Databricks or into Delta Lake. And then at this point, if I go ahead and take a look at my, uh, my transformation, we will see that uh, the uh, all the rows of data that we just created are all here. And then uh, my uh, my entire kind of 1,020 rows uh, of the demonstration that we did, all of the data has been persisted. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, you know, we, we could essentially go ahead and uh, use something like Spark uh, to do uh, SCD type one and type two of the fact that we've got our uh, system of record here in bronze. And you know, Spark could go ahead and create goal tables uh, which could essentially be served up to uh, any analytics interface like Synapse Studio or Power BI or uh, Databricks Redash. Um, and basically, you know, the end-to-end -end latency coming from our SQL server into this Delta Lake, as you can saw, you know, it kind of is within a few seconds of uh, latency. And, you know, this is the kind of first draft I've created of this KDI Java. But basically, if we can go ahead and uh, horizontally scale out, you know, we can reduce this time um, into Delta within, you know, anywhere like within uh, five seconds, right? So, you know, as fast as Debezium is getting those logs, we can get that data kind of served up in, in basically in, in real time. So, yep, that's pretty much the demonstration. Thank you so much.